Hello, welcome to this video on the concept behind integration by parts. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, and I'm here to explain to you how this method works and hopefully motivate the, um, the formula, try to figure out where this formula comes from. Um, it is the integral of u dv is equal to uv product minus the integral of v du. Where does that come from and why is it something that you can use to help you integrate functions? That's my goal. All right. Um, sorry, one second. Here we go. So integration by parts. Your, your job is to be able to integrate more functions. That's your goal. And this is a technique that you're going to add to your tool chest. Okay. Right now, the techniques of integration that you know, honestly, there's only one using u substitution. Okay but we want to be able to integrate more and so we need more techniques and so what we're going to do is go through uh, four techniques this video is just geared towards one technique integration by parts okay after you learn that there's some other techniques that you need to learn as well and so those techniques are integrating powers of trig functions that's something i need you to be able to do and then next i think is the most difficult integrating using the technique of trig substitution you bring trig into a func uh, to an integral that doesn't have any trig in it at all and with the goal in mind of that trig being able to help you integrate okay and the last technique is partial fraction decomposition it's really heavy on algebra like 75 percent of the problem is you doing algebra and a small percentage left over um is some some calculus and then there's some more algebra at the very end too so um so in this video we focus on integration by parts um, right now, you know, u substitution and substitution. I want you to think of it as the chain rule in reverse. Remember the chain rule It's the derivative of a composite function. It's a function who is inside of another function and the chain rule attacks how to find the derivative of such a thing. Well, the substitution, u substitution is the reverse of that. You want to find the antiderivative of a composite function. Okay. So with that mindset, I want you to think about integration by parts as the product rule in reverse. The product rule is, is about taking the derivative of a product of functions. And so instead of a derivative, it'll be that the, the integration by parts is geared towards being able to integrate the product of functions. Okay. Remember the chain, uh, the product rule, derivative of the product is not the product of the derivatives. You have to take them one at a time and leaving the other function alone and add those two guys together. Using this statement, we're going to derive the formula for integration by parts. Start off by taking the integral of both sides. Integral of the left is equal to the integral of the right. On the right hand side, integral of a, a sum is the sum of the integrals. We have two separate integrals there. One is in blue and one is in red. Okay. On the left hand side, we have the integral of the derivative of a product but fundamental theorem of calculus says that these guys are inverse operations of each other the integral of the derivative is just the function and so the product of f and g is equal to the integral of f prime times g plus the integral of f times g prime okay and we're going to solve for one of these let's solve for the red um and we'll have uh it's written kind of backwards here let's put the red on the left hand side here we are looking at the integral of f times g prime and saying that it's equal to the product of f and g minus the integral of f prime times g and so why would we want to do this like what is this heading towards how do we get this formula uv out of this thing on the next slide, we'll take a look at that. I'm gonna have this same last line with all the colors removed and do some renaming and we'll get the formula UV, UDV and all that. So there's the line again. Let U be equal to F of X. Its derivative is F prime of X. We see F prime in the formula. We're gonna have to replace F prime of DX. F prime of X DX is in the formula. We'll have to replace that with DU. Um, F is in the form. We have to replace that with U. Okay. Now, for the other part of the integrand that's on the left there, we're going to call that dV. And its antiderivative, its integral is V. Right? The integral of G prime is G. All right. So we see some G primes in there. We see some G's in there. Every, every piece of this is in 
the uh, formula. Now let's go in and replace. We have the integral of u times dv is equal to the product of u and v minus the integral of v times du. There's our formula. Strip away all that. We have exactly the formula for integration by parts. The integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. It's like saying, okay, I have one integral and I, 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 I now want to do this other integral instead. There's one major issue that I need you to be able to wrestle with and, and, and find your way through. How to choose which is what? I mean, you have a product. How do you know which one is going to be what? How do you know who's going to be you and how do you know who's going to be dv? Okay. And hopefully with this next slide, the bottom of this slide and the next slide, you'll be able to do that. So the big picture is that we are trading in one integral for another. On the left hand, we have the integral that we're given, where we tag one piece is d, uh, dv and the other piece as u. Okay. And on the right hand side, I just take the product of those two, uh, two functions, u and v, and I still have an integral there. It's the product of v and du. So why would you want to do this? You're trading in the u dv integral for the v du integral. You still got to integrate that guy. You want to make sure then that the guy you're trading in for is something that's simpler, easier to integrate. The VDU integral should be a simpler integral than the UDV integral. It should be. <laughs> We're going to find out. There's going to be an example where it's not. It's going to be exactly the same. Or if you do it wrong, it's going to be more difficult. Our job, choose U to be a function that becomes simpler when you take its derivative. They, that'll give you the DU being simpler. But then at the same time, there's, there's the DV part. Right. And you want to make sure you choose, make sure the DV that you'll have then is something that you can integrate. You don't want to be, you don't want to have a DV in hand that you can't integrate because, because uh, we need to be able to integrate that DV to get the V. And so in the end, that will help you choose U and DV. And one more thing that I have for you is a mnemonic. Okay. It's a hierarchy that helps you figure out what U should be based on types of functions, all right? If you're trying to integrate using the technique of integration by parts and you see a logarithmic function, natural log, L-O-G, base 10, whatever you want, a log function, you should let u be equal to that log function, okay? In the absence of a log function, if you see an inverse trig function, you should let u be equal to that inverse trig function. In the absence of a log function, if there is no inverse trig function, if you see an algebraic function, you should let u be equal to that algebraic function. What is an algebraic function? Well, you most know them as polynomials, right? X to an integer value, a counting number value, but it could also be um, X to a rational value. It could be the square root of X, X to the one half. So algebraic functions, if they're in there and there aren't any log or inverse trig functions, you should let u be equal to the algebraic function. Okay. In the absence of those three, you're down to just two types of functions left, trig functions and exponential functions. This, this mnemonic here um, puts the T before the E, but I want you to know that they are interchangeable. One's not any higher than the other. You can choose either way when it comes to just those two guys. We're going to find out something strange happens when you have an integral that has exponential and trig together. But um, in order to be able to have a mnemonic that you could verbalize without too much trouble, I choose to put the T before the E so I can call it lie eight instead of uh, the E before the T with those three vo vowels together. That's kind of hard to be able to uh, pronounce. And so lie eight it is. All right. So in subsequent videos, we are going to have a bunch of examples of you executing the technique. Now that you know what to choose you to be, the other part is going to be DV. You know what the formula is. You know where it comes from. Now you just got to go get your hands dirty and do a bunch of problems till you master the technique. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help and um, take care. I'll see you in the next video.